forgot. And it's right about time for yet another refreshing edition of The Missing Link, a drive of the Hearts to Build initiative, an NGO, a non-governmental and non-profit organization whose primary goal is to drive a holistic development of the youth. Founded by Reverend Father Augustine Obi and Onyinye Ralph Mwachiko. My name is Dara and I'm welcoming you to yet another show today. Well, today we're not going to be talking about anything new, but let's just say this is a follow-up, a sequel, a part two, a continuation of our discussion from last week where we spoke about uh, youths as agents of change in sustainable agriculture. We're going to be calling this part two. Like I said, a follow-up. And today, we're going to be speaking to yet another expert. We spoke to a veterinarian doctor last week and also an agropreneur. This week, we're going to be speaking to Professor Eugene Namdiwachuku, who is a professor, a practicing farmer, and livestock consultant. He's also a professor of animal genetics and breeding, and still giving accolades to whom it is due. He's also a multi-species professor at the Michael Okbara University of Agriculture, Umudike. He started his career as a livestock manager during National Youth Service Program, and he has served as a pioneer farm manager at Moa U. Professor uh, Eugene is a practicing farmer, like I said earlier, a livestock consultant to private, public, and government at various levels. He's also a leading scientist over several research grants and collaborations. And please, he's very married, happily married, might I add. So. I just need to, you know, crush that cookie if you are having anything in mind. He's very happily married. Well, welcome to the show today, Prof. Good to have you. Thank you very much. Also, welcome, we, audience. Uh, thank you so much. We're also joined by Reverend Father Augustine Obi. I'm sure a lot of you have missed his voice, but he's back with us. Welcome to the show, Father. Hello, Father. Are you there? Thank you very much, Dara. It's a pleasure. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, um, Prof, last week we spoke about how agriculture is gradually... Yeah, yeah thank you very much, uh, Vera. It's a pleasure. All right. So, uh, last week we spoke about, uh, you know, the basics. We basically did a start-up about agriculture, especially how a lot of youths have um, fallen off the, the, uh, the bus. Being uh, invested in agriculture right now is seen as a dirty work, as a work that comes with a lot of dirt. And not a lot of youths want to get acquainted with agriculture. Also spoke about how to start up businesses. But then I want to see from your own view, uh, according to Professor Eugene, how can you describe agriculture? To describe agriculture? Mm. Well, agriculture is a science and art of uh, uh, raising crops and animals or tending animals is a basic uh, cultural science that is why it's called agriculture is the culture of a people and the culture of raising crop and uh, livestock so it's part of life science i would say because it's an applied ag ag you know, biology and no life on earth can be sustained without practice of agriculture so agriculture is life, and uh, life is agriculture. Mm, well said. Well, before I move on to Father, of course, I want to get Father's views on some things, seeing as he wasn't, uh, he wasn't on the show last week. But before we go further, I want to remind you that we are live on Facebook at the moment. Uh, we're live on Facebook. The live streaming is shared on the Heart to Build Initiative Facebook. So you can head on to the Heart to Build Initiative Facebook. It is Heart to Build, that is H-E-A-R-T, to the figure, Build, B-U-I-L-D, or Joint Together, Space Initiative. We're live there for our streamers and our listeners from outside Omaha. here. We're also going to be taking your calls very soon when it's time. All right, Father, so let us come to you right now. Um, from, from history, seeing as, you know, our forefathers, our ancestors have a very rooted background in agriculture, what can you say about how far agriculture have come? Do you think it's improving or is it depreciating? I thank you so much. Uh, borrowing from what uh, Professor Eugene has said, agriculture is a life science. Agriculture is life, and that is agriculture. Um, it, going from the question whether agriculture has improved, I think it has improved. 
um, in Nigeria in particular, but I think there, there have been a lot of uh, barriers. Uh, there's been a lot of setbacks in kind of coming up with sustainable agriculture in Nigeria. And for me, that lack of improvement uh, stems from kind of, you know, the pessimistic uh, perceptions about agriculture and how the pessimistic perception uh, uh, young people have, uh, you know, the, the capacity agriculture has to improve their living standards. I guess that's, that's why I guess Professor Eugene would throw more light on this. That's why agriculture hasn't, hasn't improved. That's why, and another problem is from you know, the perspective and, 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 and investment you know, from the government. So government has not been able to provide us with, you know, a, a adequate, you know, uh, structural uh, perceptions or structural policies that uh, underpin participation in agriculture. That's only why it has not improved in Nigeria. Uh, another way, another reason why it has not uh, the lack of implementation of the technology in the uh, agricultural, agricultural sector. I mean, agriculture has improved in Nigeria. Mm. All right. Well said, Father. All right, um, so, Prof, let us move to, um, you know, Father, Hello, interest. There. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Are you through? Can we move on or you have something else to add? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. All right. So I said, are you are you through or you are still talking? Because I lost you there for a moment. But well, yes, I was yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So what I was saying, I was at the what I got improved is for me it has, but it has improved to the standard, um, to what standard as it should be in a, in a, in the Western world. And when I come home to Nigeria and I see how things are done back home it's, it's it's very unfortunate that they there hasn't been a lot of investment in agriculture perhaps in the eastern part of nigeria perhaps so there has been uh, there has been good uh policy from the government there has been good perception you know as well i guess that's why agriculture has really improved they have to use more mm. all right okay thank you so much for that one all right um so moving on prof seeing as you are an active key player you are at the forefront especially in the education sector um are there any challenges so far that you can point your fingers to especially in trying to um inculcate or introduce the youths of today into agriculture are there any challenges so far that you face well um for now the youths in Nigeria, especially in the eastern part of the country, mm. they are enterprising people. Uh, they are aggressive. The challenging situation now in agriculture is that agriculture does not seem to provide the ready, you know, uh, livelihood that youths require. Mm. People need quick money, and people need things that will help them change their economic condition and status. So if we make agriculture attractive, we have somebody invest, you know, in agriculture, say, for six months, nine months, and then the person has returns on investment that is meaningful, that will make him be proud of himself, then definitely agriculture will have more people, more youths, you know, patronizing it. But where are there are alternatives? So there's a stiff competition between involvement in agriculture and getting involved in other sources of income. So apart from the uh, challenge that the government has not done much in providing enabling environments, you know, like empowering people to do agriculture, give funds. Like the administration of uh, Jonathan, uh, Bill, uh, good luck, uh, Bill, uh, Jonathan. That empowers some youths through you win, for instance. Mm. A number of them, you know, made fortunes through, through agriculture, through other investments that the we win was able to sponsor. In fact, I was at the center of it because I had to write proposals and encourage youths to get involved. About two of them got, you know, 10, 10 million. 
Mm. And that was a substantial amount of money. Those two young men now, they are all in players of level. They are happily married, riding their cars. Riding, you know, and um, this is a, a kind of situation. If the bottleneck of, you know, uh, not providing enabling environment, especially empowerment, is taken away, the youth will wait. Mm. They'll, be, they'll be involved. Mm. They want to practice agriculture. But as long as somebody can jump into a KK and be able to feed himself, and then you tell him to go and do agriculture that he'll wait for, for about four or five months mm. before he gets anything. And uh, at the end of the day, if the thing is not even insured and there is uh, losses, he loses everything and he becomes poorer. Those things are not, uh, you know, uh, going to encourage the youth to be involved in agriculture. Okay, so while you were speaking, I picked two things. I picked um, impatience and, of course, I picked uh, the lack of government empowerment. Well, I'm going to go back to Father now. Remember that the mission and vision of the Hard to Build initiative is to drive a holistic development. That's why I think this is a very balanced session, seeing as we have Father, who is going to drive us to a holistic point of view right now. So let's talk about impatience with Father. Um, Father, so um, Prof mentioned the fact that Youths of today are driven by the quick money syndrome. They want to invest today and see it immediately. Uh, that can be a very, very dangerous virus. What do you think can be the remedy for it? You know, the quick money syndrome. Prof says they want to invest today. They want but to see the money today. Uh, but this, uh, thank you so much. I think this is a very critical question, Dara. Uh, Prof mentioned, uh, you know, quick money in our mm. culture but we have to kind of look at this you know holistically or rather contextually and and that context should be youth unemployment which is a huge challenge you know not just in nigeria but in the global south and the, it is a very significant challenging condition in nigeria so everyone is looking for quick fix you know quick money uh, and just like um uh, folks say you know there's this competition and it, uh, somebody, a, a young person, will prefer to, you know, drive keke that gives him good returns than going into agriculture that needs, you know, sustained endurance and perseverance. You know, uh, well, the, the the reality is is, is that uh, you know agriculture is a, a primary source of livelihood, and 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 it's not just it's not just kind of um, uh, demonizing the youth for following the quick fix to life. It's a totally it's a totally different area. But I think as as Paul has pointed out, that there, there needs to be huge in investment made. Not only that, the government needs to improve infrastructure in Nigeria. And there has to be, you know, access to, to finances, you know, access to fund. You know, and and, and not only that the government has to do a lot in terms of marketing, marketing agricultural products, and also in terms of changing this whole perception of, of, of agriculture from, from, our, from our young people. You know, and when it, you know, going to the big six syndrome, you know, we live in the in the, in, the, in the world of a quick fix, you know, you know, um, in the world where people want easy money, young people even go to the extent of looking at, you know, metaphysical ways of, uh, of generating money. As I say, it's a totally different angle. My, my response to this is, you know, perseverance pays. Perseverance pays, and you know that is this Igbo adage, you know, omenike na you know, and, and our people, our young people, need to learn how to how to persevere in life. They need to learn how to not just to persevere, how to you know, bend down, learn skills in agriculture. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what what pays is our vision. What pays our capacity to learn, you know, to endure, to persevere in order to reap the fruit. Of our level, it's not just the quick fix, not just the quick, quick fix to life, but tying it back to agriculture. Government needs to provide, you know, uh, an urban environment, you know, for for young people to be able to engage in agriculture. I think we need to also put this in, in context as well. You know, it's, it's youth involvement, youth engagement, and this engagement is it, it means participation, not just participation, active participation. In, in agriculture and then there's quite, quite a lot to gain from it all right 
Okay, well said, Father. Thank you so much for that contribution. Well, if you are an aspiring farmer, if you are a present farmer or you're looking forward to becoming a farmer, doesn't matter if it's plants or if it's livestock, we're ready to welcome your live calls right after this short break. A quick message from the facilitators of this program. When we come back, we'll take your calls live in the studio, 0808-1826-949 or 0811-6052-949. 0808-1826-949 or 0811-6052-949. The SMS lines, you can send in your SMS. SMS 09065108289. That's for farmers, um, you know, um, intending and present. If you have any challenges whatsoever, you can come in with your live calls. We're going to be taking calls right after the short break. Stay with us, all right? All right, welcome back. 18 minutes past four. We are still talking about youths as um, key players in the sustainability of agriculture in Nigeria. And of course, we are in the studio live with. Professor Eugene, uh, of course, he's been speaking to us since 4 p.m. The phone lines are buzzing. Okay, so before we go ahead, let's hear from you. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the show. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Charlie. I'm calling from the All right, go ahead. All right, missed that one. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the show. Hello, good evening. This is Samuel speaking. No deals. All right, so go ahead. Okay, so I enjoyed the conversation about you, um, the Reverend NGO, the professor, and Nigeria, and on context of agriculture. Mm. It's very important how agriculture is based on youth issues. But you know the charity begins from home. If the Nigerian government, as a claim, don't have um, insufficient capacity, what about the home? Um, you know, um, how many of you actually plant corn this time around? It's mm-hmm. corn season. Corn has been planted. That's the beginning of agriculture. Um, you want to see, but if you go study agriculture in even in GS, even in junior secondary school, you see that this have this land and series. If someone decides to say, okay, I'll plant by September or by plant by April, by September, I'll go, I'll go drive care. You mustn't be one way street, you know. As a radio broadcaster, as a presenter, or as a news outlet, you go fetch for news, you go fetch for marketing, you go fetch for other things to make sure everything goes around. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to when Nigeria went to the US, when put it by um, Okra with the US. Now, no one went to the British to the public again. Oh. Who eats now? Your network is failing us. So, well, what I'm going to tell you, I think they have a good point, and people should, the government, the government are well, as I truly people, they should be people to people. It's grassroots. Let everybody go back. Let everybody around around you that can follow and help the world, or help the pastor, even the professor. All right. Okay. Career fair is important. Another one to just add to the old to the old show. It's interesting. I enjoy it. All right. Amazing. It's slow deal. Totally. Thank, thank you so much. It's our pleasure that you're enjoying the program. Thank you so much. All right. So, Prof. Um, he mostly spoke about the fact that um, it's one thing to keep calling out the government, and it's another thing because charity begins at home. He gave um, you know, a a pure example of you know now is about to get into the corn season, and how many of us planted corn at home? You know, that's a very, very sensitive question. So that is leading me to the next question I had for you. Speaking as you are in the education sector, you are in the field at the moment. What is the willingness willingness of today's youth to actually pick up agriculture as a course of study? I mean, we see all of them. It's it, it, it's more like it's a thing of, um, I don't want to use the word shame, might be too deep a word. But then it's a thing of... Um, it's a thing of the value for somebody to say, oh, I'm studying agriculture in the university. So how is that coming? Well, um, for now, our students are enthusiastic okay. to pursue careers in agriculture. Mm-hmm. I have been in the system for uh, close to 30 years now. And uh, we've continued to receive uh, high enrolls, our uh, intakes of students coming to read agriculture. As concerning his observation that charity begins at home, uh, I plant 
just as I mentioned that I'm a practicing farmer, mm. I have not less than five crop farms, and all of them have been fully farmed. So we can say you are preaching what you practice. So, and not only that, like this morning, I have some pains around me just because I had to engage close to 50 students, teaching them how to plant maize and the groundnut. Then t next week, we'll be planting cowpea in our environment. I have cattle, so we use those fodder to, to sustain the animals. Hmm. We do minimal grazing because we don't have grazing land. So, uh, the fact is this we are doing the little we can when you look around that the co a cup of gary is about a hundred naira now people are taking that challenge to make sure that they reduce it so everybody is farming around mm. Mm -hmm. so maybe he's i don't think he's at home the person who just called he's he called from a uh, from a, abroad are you, so, are you speaking because of the accent? You know? Yes, the accent could or, be could be here and have that kind okay, of okay because he didn't tell us where he was calling yeah, from. Yeah, true, true. Know. The network delays. So, yeah, that's a valid point. So all we need actually is encouragement. If government can give subsidies, mm -hmm. you know, subsidize inputs. Yeah, and that, uh, that's leading me to the next yes. one. So we've talked about the government. So just quickly, what do you think? Let's just assume that you know some government officials are listening to this program. What points? What um, advice can you give to them? You know, you spoke about the good luck Ebele Jonathan administration. So what can you put out there? What do you think the government can do? You know, speaking about your profile, I saw somewhere that you are a scientist over several research grants and collaborations. So yes. let's talk about that and how you can, you know, how you can, how you think the government can improve on the agricultural mm -hmm. sector for the youths. Yeah, let me take them one by one. Mm. You know, you have asked uh, what should the government do mm. to help change this, uh, change the narrative that youths are not getting involved in agriculture. Our youths are enterprising. They are knowledgeable. You see a, a youth that has not handled a machete, because I teach the 400 level, the practical year students. Then you now tell the person, see, bend this knife by 45 degrees close mm. to the ground. You draw it and then demonstrate. And then you cut and you give him. Maybe he, he came from Lagos or Port Harcourt. He has never done agriculture before, but he wrote to read agriculture. You see him do the thing the way you... And that is a, you know, uh, a sign of intelligence. And uh, gradually you see them getting transformed. I want government at all levels, the local government, state and uh, federal. federal, to take it as a challenge to make sure that all that is needed for people to practice agriculture is provided. There can be land mapped out in a cluster for people to farm at the local government level or state level. And then federal government should mark out money, make it available for those who want to, you know, to farm at subsidized interest rates or you know at even zero you know uh, 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 rates and that is the way to get the people like we look at india you see people giving everything they need to do to practice agriculture i was in india i saw that some people just have what looks like a quarter of an acre for a lifetime and they grew more than you know five six seasons of crops continuously mm. because the water is there the irrigation facilities are there and then you are growing 60 days crop after which you grow again you are, and i was just looking at them mm. this is the only portion of land somebody has in a lifetime but he uses it well maximally all right um so just before we take a closing uh, statement from prof let's speak to father so um father um what i'm garnering from this whole conversation right now is that we uh you and you know it's beautiful what the heart to build initiative is doing and you you know as one of the frontliners in the moral instructions the religious instructions um you think that we should preach the 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 sermon of uh, no good thing comes easy and that you know patience is golden Hello. Uh, can, can, can you repeat yourself? So repeat that question again. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Okay. All right. I said. I said. Um, Hello. Yes. I said. Coming back to you now. Um, we are. We are encouraging the preaching of the sermon of um, um, patience. 
the patient dog they say it's the fattest bone that's what they said and um, we should preach to the youths make them more aware that um, no good thing comes easy you know especially with the fact that they want quick money Hello. Well, uh, uh, if the demand is not favorable to us, but if you can hear me properly, uh, I just speak a few things from what you said. Look, um, can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can. Please go ahead. Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I just I speak. To I picked a few things from what you said. Uh, the, the the line was crappy. Look, um, the reality is even from 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 agriculture, a patient dog eats the fattest bone. That's it. And nothing good comes easy. Nothing good comes easy. You know. Uh, again, from little things, big things grow. Our youth, our young people should learn to persevere. Our young people should learn to have a vision about reality, and they, they should also learn, you know, not to follow the quick fix to life, you know, because it does not pay. It does not pay. You know, even in, in, the, in the process of planting, planting and sowing seed in agriculture is instructive. You know, we have to plant seed, we have to water it before it grows, we, we have to manure it, we have to have sex. Okay. You know. So so that is this is just the process of life. Mm. So my 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 advice is to keep being visionary, keep being visionary. It will be the things the things will fall into place. Mm. All right, well said, Father. All right, um, so this last question I'm about to ask the professor right now is one of the reasons why you should always tune in to the meeting link every Saturday because you get to hear information firsthand, some you've never heard before. Some you might have heard by just, you know, a wing of the bird. You just never took any importance to it. This is one of the perks of being on the meeting link every Saturday. And that question is, let's talk about the grants. A lot of youths have the desire, have the enthusiasm, they have the willingness to go into agriculture but you know there's there, there has to be capital prof mm -hmm. yes so how about those who do not have it personally how do they go ahead are there any active grants whatsoever is there any way that they can reach out to the hard to build initiative for maybe you know a link to any of these grants yes um the federal government has uh, a number of uh, um agricultural grants available through uh, the CBN, the NASAL program, the AGMIS program, the Ancoboras, you know. Um, then the graduate um, entrepreneurial scheme grants, but people need to find out where and how they can you know anchor into these uh, grants mm. not only that some individuals also have been magnanimous like uh, Tony Elmelu although that one is a uh, very highly competitive but then at some levels there are grants there and there. in fact there is a place globally it's a grant for me grant for you you know you can pick up small small grants that can help start up a business especially in agriculture as well as in commerce all right uh, that you have heard professor eugene uh, right here on the missing link professor eugene wachuku a professor of animal genetics and breeding at the michael okbara university of agriculture i'm sure i'm pretty sure a lot of your students might be listening to you at the moment so i know i'm going to get one or two shout outs oh you spoke to my prof and all of that all right so uh if you are a youth and you're listening to the program and maybe you are interested in the grants you've heard that there are those available what you're going to do right now for me or for us and even for yourself more especially is go down to facebook and follow the had to build initiative of course they are responsible for this power packed program youths inspired youth inclined they brought the prof to the studio today to speak to you extensively about agriculture and its sustainability send them a dm all right the facebook page is hot to build initiative that is h-e-a-r-t to the figure not the word please to the figure joined together with the hearts build b-u-i-l-d hearts to build all joints together space initiative follow the page thank you and of course send them a quick dm if you have any further interest about venturing into agriculture or you're an already existing farmer and need advice of course they're going to help you out 
that you know you can also be part of the ngo i think it's a fantastic thing that every youth in nigeria should be part of an ngo at least just do something out of your humanity without gaining anything all right thank you so much prof it's been an honor having you in the studio thank you thank, thank you, you also to the heart me. to build initiative they are responsible for the missing link a program that holds every saturday at four o'clock to four thirty right here on flow 94.9 fm thank you so much to one over two of the founders reverend father augustin will be the network was not being friendly probably because of the rain but thank you so much for your immense contribution today Father Augustine, are you pleasure. All, right. Pleasure. all right, all right. Okay, and to Onyera of Wachuku, who decided to be a spectator today. She's in the studio at one corner. Left all the work for Father Augustine will be and Prof today. That's amazing. Until next week, Saturday, keep listening to Flow 94.9 FM. And also, I might repeat again, do follow the Facebook page, all right? My name is Dara. Have yourself a wonderful weekend.